John Patillo, welcome to Questioning the Manager. Now, a key theme in your portfolio has been telecoms convergence from four to three incumbents. Can you explain this and whether or not it's been playing out? Yeah, there's actually two strands to telecom convergence. The, the four to three play is actually about mobile phone um, markets, generally move from four player markets to three player markets. Um, this is so-called market repair, because generally telecom, mobile telecom in Europe is underinvested. 4G needs more spent on it, and it's actually too competitive. So the EC Competition Commissioner is not adverse to some players consolidating the market from five or four players down to three. Um, that's happened in Ireland, Austria, Germany, um, probably happened in Italy, and has recently just happened in the UK. So it's a big structural trend. Three players have higher margins um, and generally are less competitive, um, which is bad for consumers, but it's good for bondholders. And then the second strand of telecom convergence is the convergence of mobile phone operators with cable TV operators, um, whereby they can offer four services instead of three, uh, quad play. Um, quad play services have a much lower churn factor because you're captured as a customer. And you've seen this with Vodafone, who've bought uh, a number of cable TV assets in Germany and Spain, for example. Um, and as I'm sure you're aware, there's a lot of rumours of the convergence of Liberty Media who own Virgin Media in the UK amongst a lot of cable TV assets in Europe with um, Vodafone. So there could well be a merger or, or a takeover there. And I think pan-European, there'll be a lot of convergence of cable TV operators, um, broadband operators with mobile phone operators. Big structural trend. It's actually happening faster than we thought, um, which is fine. And generally, we hold the higher yielding, uh, more levered, a smaller player in those markets and if they get taken over by the less levered, higher rated um, investment grade incumbent, obviously their bond prices go up which is good for our shareholders. Now a lot of investors are looking towards weight rate rises which are due soon. When do you expect this will be and how are portfolios positioned for this? Yeah, rate rises have been due soon for uh, many, many years now, and uh, it constantly amazes us that they never actually come through. The Fed is desperate to raise rates. They want to get away from emergency rates. Um, they keep talking it up, um, but I think you need sufficient economic conditions to merit it. Um, unemployment has come down a lot. Um, inflation is too low and growth is too low. Um, there's some wage pressure, so it could probably merit a 25 basis point rise maybe in December. Um, and we would say, well, so what? Because uh, mathematically, that's a tiny percentage increase. Um, and it's been very well flagged, almost over flagged. Um, so we, we're not particularly worried about that. What one sh could be worried about is the trend, how, how, how often rates went up and uh, where they peaked. And currently, given the economic outlook, we even don't think that's a major threat. So um, they may well come. But it, policy, in our opinion, would just be less loose if they rose by a quarter of 1%. Rates would still be very low. Um, what's much more important is economic confidence uh, and the management of the economy by the central banks. Now, the Greek crisis has moved today towards a resolution with the announcement of a deal. Um, is this a positive for fixed income assets? Um, it's a positive for risk assets. So equities and credit markets have rallied quite materially today. So that's encouraging. Um, sovereign bonds have sold off because there's less flight to quality in, in reverse. Um, the Greek crisis is still a hell of a mess. They've got too much debt. There's endless um, tightropes that the Greek uh, government has to deliver on. Uh, their history of delivering privatization receipts, structural reform, paying back debt is appalling, frankly. Um, so longer term, we remain fairly skeptical um, on their ability to structurally reform the economy, to grow and to repay debt. Um, the Europeans, especially the French, were actually pretty supportive. The Germans were fairly unsupportive. Um, so we're still pretty sceptical. But I think it's a kind of known unknown, if you like. Um, so that some progress has been made. Um, but longer term, we're pretty wary of investing in that part of the world. Having said that, we do think it's generally containable. And if anything, it's thrown up a few opportunities. Some cheap bonds have come out. And we've tucked a few away for the shareholders. OK, now some commentators point to the end of a 30-year bull run in bonds. How do you find value for investors? Well, uh, generally, I think the, the bull run is over. Uh, I think it's unlikely yields will go any lower than they got uh, a while ago. Um, having said that, there's a bit of a shakeout recently um, on the back of Greece um, and on valuations as well. Um, so in a credit shakeout, that throws up greater yields, um, which we can lock in for our investors. So we've done a little bit of that. 
Um, generally, we live in a kind of environment of low inflation, low growth, low defaults, with volatility spikes um, or liquidity uh, vacuums. And on the back of that, given the herding that central bankers have pushed a lot of people into the same trade, occasionally an external event like Greece will push everyone on the boat to the opposite side. That will throw up some valuation opportunities. And if you're patient and have some perspective, um, you can then lock in the greater yields in the companies you like. Um, but you just have to wait for the bonds to come to you at the right price. John Tiller, thank you. Thank you.